Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Blair Smith, and I'll be presenting Brunswick Clean 2. When friendships are formed via an architectural commission, those involved see the building through a different lens to others. This physical thing becomes more than the grain in the timber cladding or a shadow that moves across the floor. It's imbued with the spirit of your collective aspirations. Brunswick Lean 2 is a 51 square metre addition to a heritage protected cottage that abandons the societal fetish for more space to create an appropriately sized home for a family of three. A key objective of the project was to create an interior that would provide refuge from the intensity and grit of Brunswick. On my very first phone call with the clients, they mentioned looking forward to the design process with equal measure to moving into the finished building. This attitude was a strong indicator to me of a fulfilling process ahead. So we agreed to meet at their family home. This is the original living room before construction. It was left largely untouched, albeit some new furniture and a heating panel. The clients had a great selection of art and artifacts that felt homely and naturally accumulated over time or sophisticated without pretense. It felt like a Brunswick home dog-eared books, an, ups, an, upstand piano, an upstand piano that was well used, and pets basking under fleeting beams of sunlight. The interior of the old lean-to had some charm, mainly because of their decor, but was almost untenable in winter because it was so poorly insulated. In fact, it was so cold. At this meeting, the three of us sat inside with our puffer jackets on, and understandably, uh, thermal performance became a key part of the brief. Uh, this is the old lean-to before it was removed and the existing plan. It's pretty easy to see here the inefficiency of the old lean-to in red and the clarity and functionality of the retained cottage. Reconfiguring the cottage or extending into the garden was quickly deemed to be at odds with a low-impact strategy. So it became a matter of inserting a new structure in between the elements on site that were still useful. The addition takes formal and programmatic cues from the lean-to it supersedes. The design process set out to distill the poetic utility typically inherent to these subsidiary structures. In the same instance, an important objective was to purge out the shortcomings of its predecessor, lack of aspect, an awkward layout, and of course, the, thought, the poor thermal performance. Like the old lean-to, the new addition contains all of the domestic utilities, the brief called for an additional toilet and a walk-in pantry, this guy, um, which doubles as a mudroom and thoroughfare. The planting of the northern facade meant that the greenery had an immediacy and could become part of the internal experience. So that's the planted facade. This photo was taken during the slab pour. Um, it's quite telling in terms of scale when you make note of the five concreters on the floor plate. So materials were selected to imbue the interior with a palpable slow quality. The screens are an architectural device related to mood and retreat as much as pragmatism. An intensive value, add, uh, an intensive value management process with the builder determined that the screen sat in the value add column, um, whereby the steel windows originally specified were easily deemed cost prohibitive. Similarly, a, palette, um, a paint applied with a palette knife and a ribbed ceiling became a way of providing texture in, and depth in a cost-effective way. During our meetings, the clients developed the phrase strong and elegant, and this became a sort of condensed brief or even a mantra, a term that we checked in with regularly and something that even assisted decision-making. You can see here that the eave is carefully sized so that winter light is invited deep into the floor plate. The bathroom is positioned uh, in, to connect with the garden in a way that feels legitimate and visceral. When completely open, the bathroom melds with the spaces adjacent, heightening a sense of permeability within the layout. The planted threshold was devised to seemingly graft the new building into its setting, suggesting the addition had somehow cross-pollinated with the established garden upon its arrival. Internally, the planter brings the foliage into the foreground um, and, 
an opportunity that would otherwise be missed with a conventional deck or a paved area along that facade line. Oops. Okay, um, within the design process, we set out to investigate the notion of blurred space and blurred material. One is forced to ask, what is wall static vis-a-vis -vis screen dynamic? Furthermore, what is brick and what is mortar? The, uh, the clients genuinely engage with the design and procurement process, undertaking some of the construction work themselves. This included painting, staining, and the landscaping of the planter. In terms of sustainable design, it was about the fundamentals. Pre-owned appliances were reinstated, factory seconds were scrimmaged, even the island bench was purchased on eBay. On a whim, the clients acquired the island, and when some redesign was required to accommodate it, and my carefully detailed island bench drawing was thrown in the bin, we jokingly referred to the issue from then as Island Gate. The light grey rib ceiling can change dramatically in shade and perceived depth over the course of the day and again in the evening when the wall sconces are turned on. Uh, clear story awning windows at the high end of the ceilings purge out hot air in summer. Top right above that door, there's also one in the powder room at the high end of the ceiling. Here's the pre-owned cooker and a factory second range hood with a custom stainless steel surround set back from that splashback. There are no ceiling lights, giving the interior a primal quality in the evening, as if to ensconce the inhabitants within a dimly lit den of some kind. And then, even in the daytime, internal mood can be controlled via the screens. The northern facade is split into 11 modules, the three sliding screens along this facade have integrated fly mesh and can be locked across corris a corresponding doorway, allowing the occupants to leave the house or sleep while it's secure and passively cooled and free of insects. In turn, each screen has a dedicated portion of wall on which it can be parked, so all glazing can become unobstructed. And while the well-trod path of building bloated, cheaply constructed, extensions to our heritage building stock continues to be prevalent, our clients have commissioned a building that meets their needs without overextending themselves or using unnecessary resources. Brunswick Lean 2 forms part of the practice's ongoing investigation into ways that regenerative projects can be delivered sensitively and modestly by building only what is required with integrity. Thanks.